Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Mr. Magazine. Yes. You collect. Mm-hmm. What kind of comics do you collect? Um, Batman, Spider-Man, Star Wars, preferably graded. I like autographed ones. What would you... Okay, I decided today I'm going to start collecting The Amazing Spider-Man. Hmm. What advice would you give me for working on the set? Well, if you're collecting, you're investing, collecting both. Uh, collecting. I, collecting, I want them. Yeah. All right, then you know, I would like. When I started collecting. I wanted the whole run, so I would start okay. filling yep. in. If I had more money, I'd go with the more expensive ones, the key issues, or I would go with the cheaper ones if I was a little tight on money. So, I would say anything from issue one to a hundred. You probably want to buy them graded, or any big key issues, issue three hundred and so forth. So buy them graded. Uh, the cheaper ones, just buy them raw, you know, because uh, they're going to be in nice shape. You know, no reason to grade them unless, like, I'm crazy. So now I'm grading them up to 200. Then at that point, I probably grade them up to 300 and maybe stop it there because that's the last really big key. I mean, there's some other ones after that, you know, carnage and that. But um, that would I, I would suggest that. One thing that nobody does but you should do, and I'm just using Spider-Man as an example, mm -hmm. Um, now and we're going to leave out something that you started collecting when you were seven years old. We're going to we're going to leave that out because, okay. of course, if you started collecting when you're seven years old, you're seven years old. Yeah. You have seven cents to your name. Right. But if you're a little bit older and you begin to collect something that's established, like a Spider-Man uh, run, mm -hmm. uh, something rather like that, the wisest thing you should do is buy number one issue first. Almost nobody does that unless you luck into it. And I'm, I'm going to leave out luck. I'm going to yeah. leave out the fact that, you know, obviously throw this all out the window. You go to a garage sale and they've got numbers two through 100 <laughs> for a dollar each. And you go, no, paper going said buy number one yeah. first. I'm going to leave these out. No, at that point you buy two through 100. Yeah. Um, but if you're paying retail for them uh, and you're not getting an incredible deal, buy number one first. Why, Mr. Magazine? Well, you get the hard ones out of the way. It's, well, it's all downhill from there. And the other, it's, it's probably the best one to invest in. The other reason is, right now, I just looked. Say you wanted good, a good 2.0. Mm -hmm. The good 2.0 value of Amazing Spider-Man, number one, is $4,800. Okay. In good. The high-grade value per Overstreet uh, for, I don't know, 512 just some common issue, mm -hmm. is $6. Five years from now, what is number 512 or 532 going to be worth in high grade? $10. Maybe. Nine, eight might be $100. Right, right, right ungraded. Yeah. You're just buying them ungraded. Yeah. It might bucks. still be six bucks. It might, might be still, eight yeah. bucks. It might be 10 bucks. Yeah. What is the Spider Man number one going to be worth? Uh, 6,500? Yeah, double, probably. Yeah. Like double or triple. Yeah. Seven to $8,000, $10,000. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you've gone and you've gone, hey, I've got numbers 500 through 540. Hmm. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. how I was when I was younger, yeah, and didn't have a lot of money. That's Right, right. And obviously, if you're 7 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, it's a different story. You yeah. buy them when you can. Right. And this, obviously, there are certain certain things like an Action Comics number one, unless Jeff Bezos is watching us right now. Uh, how you doing, Jeff? Um, you're probably not going to complete the Action Comics collection. You're just not. No. Um, yeah. Because, like, a... Point five is a quarter million dollars probably at this point. It's, it is ridiculous. But, like, the man of rookie, the Batman, the detective, the, it's like in the poorest condition, there's six figures now. It's, it's untouchable. Well, I'm working on an action comics collection. I'm not buying anything until I buy number one, so <laughs> I'm just saving up yeah. for it. Well, luckily, you I have don't, 14 you don't, you don't collect so Batman, so you might as well get rid of anything that's not number one to me. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to keep this recording as proof. <laughs> but, again, most people don't think that way because you make so little progress on your collection. We'll just say there's 600 issues of Spider-Man out there. Mm -hmm. I save up for a year and I buy number one. Right. And I don't know the next highest key issue, but I save up uh, another year and I buy a number two. Mm -hmm. Or nine months and I buy number two. Yeah. I've been collecting for four <clears throat> years and I have numbers one through five. And somebody else has been collecting, and they've got 350 of the of the 600 comics already. Yeah. Well, the problem, too, when I was younger, and I had issue one, and I had Amazing Fantasy 15, 
they were in poor condition and I wasn't happy with them and I needed the money. So I'm like, well, I'll sell them for a thousand because I need a thousand. I really don't love this and hopefully I can afford it down the road and I make more money. And I was fortunate to pick up a large collection and had them in there. But say the Batman number one comes my way and, you know, it's $50,000 and it's a one. Even if I had $50,000, I'm probably not going to be very happy with it because I'm spending a lot of money, for, you know, my savings, whatever, you know, I borrow money, whatever it is. And now I have this horrible condition, ugly looking key issue, one of the, you know, most important issues in the comic history. But still, I wouldn't be happy with it, you know. And then again, I can't afford a five to a nine, you know. So, you know, you got to weigh up your options about, you know, can I afford this? Am I going to be happy with this? Because, what are the odds I'm actually going to upgrade this in my lifetime? You know? Right, and, and that's why I, I, I looked up the price of a two, mm -hmm. because that is lower mm -hmm. grade. Yeah. Obviously, if you get up and you want to build it in an eight, I, I mean, you could you could save up for ten years, and by the time you save up enough yeah. money to buy an eight in today's dollars, it's probably doubled. So you're right, never right, yeah. you're never going to end up making it uh, that way unless you hit some kind of a windfall or you get really really lucky. Right. So obviously, if you're dealing with things like action comics, detective comics, whatever, or you have an opportunity, you know. Here I am telling you, buy number one issues, the most expensive mm -hmm. issues first. Right. Yes, do that. Yeah. However, let's say that I happen to be at a comic show mentioning to some guy, yeah, I'm going to start working on Spider-Man. And he's like, oh. it's going to sound crazy, but I want to get out of the business. And yeah. I'll give you a heck of a deal on. Right. And you end up paying you know, 40% of value or something like that. Or... Mm -hmm. You're out somewhere and somebody picks them up and goes, well, I looked these up and, you know, I kind of want to get guide out of them, but you've got these postcards that I'm interested in. And you're like, uh, yeah, we'll do that trade in a yeah, second because yeah, exactly. I don't care yeah. about the take postcards. Them, take them all. Um, so you can deviate, obviously, from that. But if you are going to work on something rather, try to get the bears out of the way first because by the time you get everything that isn't a bear, yeah. The price of the bears is going to have gone up so much in right. value. Yeah. Uh, and this, again, this... This only applies if it's been a long-term collectible like that, and if it's a blue chip type collectible. Sure. Um, you know, you've got certain books you might look at. If you're collecting westerns, I might actually give you the opposite uh, advice because the price of westerns has been going down. So in the westerns, you actually would do better buying Gene Autry number one twenty-two <laughs> <laughs> because. Sure, it's a $12 book now. It'll be a $10 book five years from now. Number one might go from being a $400 book to a $200 book. True, yeah. So if it's something rather that the market's plummeting on, um, that's a whole different story as well. But hopefully that helps you a little bit. I wanted to give you a little bit different way of thinking about collecting because so few people do it that mm -hmm. way. Even though economically it's the wisest way to do it, I... Uh, it just doesn't really seem like you're collecting when you pick up one comic book a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does not seem yeah. like you're building up a collection at all. And again, don't necessarily just listen to what I'm saying there. You know, you're out at a flea market and the guy's got a bunch of Spider-Mans in his dollar bin. You buy 10 of them. That yeah. $10 isn't going to make any difference at all towards your quest for number one. Right. You might as well pick up those 10 issues while yeah. you're sitting out there. I'm more talking about, you know, you're going out and you're actively trying to build it and you build it from the highest number down yeah. you end up spending a lot more money when everything gets said and done well, so yeah, that's ahead. the problem with my batman collection i'm collecting under 100 now and i can't afford one obviously but i'm working on 99 98 97 and even common issues in poor condition are 100 bucks but it's still at least it's affordable and in my head i'm making my way down you know and older i get hopefully i have more money i can spend Maybe issue 50, 500, or 1,000, and you know, so forth. And right. Creep up to those big key issues. Yep. And again, well, the other thing, too, is we're in the business, so you never know a white walk in the door. True. You know, who knows? You could be out at some sales somewhere, and all of a sudden, or you get a phone call, or you get a phone call, and next thing you know, something good drops in our lap. That yeah. can happen as well. Or some call comes in and there's a comic store we have an opportunity to buy out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it has a bunch of Batman issues in it. Sure. So you never absolutely know. But again, if you're starting from scratch building a collection, go for the higher price stuff first unless you have uh, reason to feel that the value is going to plummet across the board. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Do hit the like button if you could. That's something that I think we all can agree on. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.